for this record to come out and be not just this good, but this special. Steve worked on this record. Hey, look, you know, we've been friends for a long time, and he's a very important friend for me and all that, but Steve worked on this record the way people used to work on records. It's, it's, I, don't know, I don't know any better way to put it than that. You know, he, he worked on it for years to make sure it was right because that was his long, long-term commitment to Darlene, and he had told her that he was going to do it someday. And, you know, the dice came up that way that day, and uh, bang. You know, Steve, Steve is, I tell Steve all the time, you know, the interesting thing about you is you only do things that are impossible to do. <laughs> you can't have... Uh, 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 a singles format, old style singles format radio radio channel in America anymore, especially not on terrestrial radio. Right. Uh, um, you know, you can you can't end apartheid. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, you can't get the rascals back together. If, if you tell him it can't be done, he will yeah. go out and do it, and he's done it time and time again. And this is another example of that. And I mean, I, I just mentioned a couple of real obvious examples. You know, you couldn't put the rascals back together. I told him. Right. He called me the day before the rascals. No, the the week that the rascals made that debut appearance at the, my daughter's can't you know, Chris Nankar fund uh, cancer benefit. Right. He called me and he said he was the honoree. He called me and he said I think we should have a band. And I said what do you got in mind? And he said the rascals. And I said <laughs> well I always have him in mind too. And he said no no no. I said Steve we've been you know I've been trying to help you do that one for for. 30 years, more, 40 years. He said, well, we're rehearsing tomorrow. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's literally what he said. Yeah. Word for word, that was the conversation. So, you know, I, I never think, I never think that Steve, I mean, actually, I always think Steve can't do things, and then I go, oh, well, Steve, maybe it'll happen, you know. You can't have a hit, you have a, can't have a hit, TV show in America was something that's made in Norwegian, not only made in Norway, but made in Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. So this is yeah. this is a joint, tr and and they they approach it like that uh, when you talk to them. Is this is a joint triumph for the two of them? Mm. And at the end of the day, it's it's Darlene gets all the credit because you couldn't do this with an ordinary singer, and she mm. is whatever the opposite of an or ordinary singer is that's what she is the funny thing is he makes it plain that it's it was never a challenge to do this with her right she's so goddamn good mm. we can't close the discussion on darlene love without talking about the interviews you did with her and steven uh for <laughs> sirius xm well first of all steve and i have a long history of doing these serious interviews that my producer just you know praise to heaven will do another one um this was something special and darlene has been on my show you know the last few years since i've had a show right um she's on at least once a year i mean it's uh we did the i think it was the 10th anniversary show she was the main guest yeah and you know we basically talked for two hours that day it was just, it, it, it was an exciting interview to do because I was hoping I knew what was coming, you know. But there's no way really to prepare yourself for that because it's very spontaneous, you know. We don't, Steve, if Steve were left to his own devices, Steve would find a way to script that stuff. He really would. <laughs> yeah. But that's sort of part of what the Steve thing is about is because our timing is very similar. You know, the Stalin thing being out of the way is going to be very interesting to see what he does because it would not surprise me if that thing and the acclaim it's gotten too. Uh, I know he's got songs. He always has songs. Of course. So you know, and he's a better singer than than people think he is, and uh, and he certainly knows how to run a band. Um, you know, I moved out of Detroit in '73. I was down in Asbury with Bruce and John. First time I'd ever been at Bruce's house. You know, we like knew each other, but didn't know each other that well. And he said, "Well, come on, we're going to go over this club, this new club called Stone Pony. We're going to see the band. A band that's there is a bunch of old friends of mine. So great." Well, Stephen was all. That was the night I met Steve, and the night I met Johnny. And 
what Johnny was doing, I had expected that I would never hear it again, and that was the price I was paying for leaving Detroit, which was a white guy doing R&B music to perfection. Mm-hmm. And he has never, ever, ever, he's made records that have their ups and downs, but he has never, ever, ever sought that out. He's always known who he is. He's always known the range of things he can do, which is actually quite right. If you've ever heard his big band record of Tom Waits songs, right? Uh, you know, and and that he made this this re- this new record for people who haven't heard it is essentially the the, the you know forty years later he's finally made a follow up to uh, uh, the three albums he made with Steve at the beginning of his recording career. Mm. It's as simple wow. as that. Wow. 